My name is Kevin. Uh, I work for a company called Digital Globe. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, I'm also going to be talking uh, about space today. Um, and uh, I don't know, oh, by the way, it is World Space Week this week. So yeah, uh, the organizing committee picked a great week for State of the Map because this is World Space Week and that's all about awareness and celebrating different technologies that, that we're using in space. Um, so I don't know where you all stand on this topic of space. Um, I personally think it's really cool. Um, hope, I don't know if, you know if, if it's a topic that interests you or you're like, what is Kevin talking about space for? This is a mapping conference. I gotta go check out this weirdo and see what he's talking about. Yes, okay. Uh, so there's a few of those people, that's fine. Um, if you watch what's happening in the aerospace industry and technology, this is a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch um, and return. Um, it's actually mind-blowing. I, I did my degree in aerospace engineering uh, a few years ago, and we never contemplated that this type of, these type of activities and missions would be possible. So uh, for me, uh, I really geek out on this, and it's really amazing. I mean, Elon Musk just announced that he's sending a rich Japanese billionaire to space with eight of his friends, and they're going to go do a loop, a lap around the moon. How cool is that? Um, we are exploring asteroids. Uh, this is the Japanese uh, aerospace, uh, uh, their, their version of NASA, it's called JAXA. They just landed on an, on an asteroid recently. They're bringing a sample back. Um, how cool is that? Uh, anyone know what this is? I bet you Mark Prilo knows what this is. Shout it out if you recognize this. Yeah, it's Voyager, who said that? All right, you get an extra cookie. Uh, thank you, it's Voyager 1. Um, Voyager 1 is approaching 42 years old, um, which means it was launched around when I was born, uh, and it's still talking to us. And so the technology we created 40, 50 years ago uh, is still propagating through space. Uh, it's, um, I wrote this down in my speaker notes, it's such a big number, hang on. Um, 13.3 billion miles away from space, um, farther than any, any, anything humans have sent into space and it's still talking to us. Um, okay, so enough of the preamble. If I haven't convinced you that space is cool, then, then fine, that's, that's okay. So you're, again, you're probably wondering why is he talking about space? Well, as a reminder, Earth is a planetary object in space. So we are riding around on a big rock in space right now. Um, this is a view from Cassini looking back through Saturn's ring at planet Earth. So all seven billion of us are sitting in that little pixel right there. That's open street map, right there, all right? Um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and we are on this crazy ride through space. I love this animation. Um, this is by an artist, his name's DJ Sadu, I think his name is, um, who built this animation of how our solar system is, is traveling through the Milky Way. Um, it's mind-blowing to me, and I've, I've done a little research. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that OpenStreetMap is limited to planet Earth. There's nothing that, in there that says we can only map planet Earth. Um, and I, Again, raise your hand if I'm wrong, call me out on this. There's nothing stopping us from mapping the moon, mapping the features on the moon, mapping Mars, mapping other, other celestial bodies. In a, in, in a hundred years from now, when they're watching YouTube in a hundred years and, and we're all uh, doing something else, Someone's gonna say, ha ha, Kevin was right. Yeah, we're mapping Jupiter right now because it's really cool and we ran out of stuff to map on Earth. So my, my more importantly, I have a postulate that I'll put out there um, that if there wasn't aerospace, or if there wasn't the technology we have in space, there wouldn't be OpenStreetMap, period. Um, there probably wouldn't be Google Maps, there probably wouldn't be Here Maps or Apple Maps. Uh, Every map we create, everything we do in the OpenStreetMap community um, is tied back to technology up in space. And think about it, when Steve Coast first drove his bike down a road in London, he had a GPS receiver in the back talking to three or four GPS satellites. So GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, um, in Japan they have QZSS, Quasi-Zenith. Um, all those technologies allow us to create the maps that we are creating today. Not only that, um, as we're registering things on the Earth's surface, a lot of our technologies are using 
an acronym called SRTM, the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, which is back in year 2000, in which the shuttle mapped the entire Earth's surface. Now, in, in orthorectification for imagery, we're, we're tying images back to that, that original model. So space has really enabled uh, OpenStreetMap and, and all the mapping we do. And I'm going to talk, a, that, that's, that's kind of the point of my talk today. Um, uh, today is another, it's not only Space Week and the start of State of the Map, it's also a company called Maxar's one-year one year birthday. So we have a little birthday cake somewhere in, in Canada uh, where uh, we're, we're eating birthday cake. But Maxar is the corporate entity um, that houses these four companies that you see up there, Digital Globe, Radiant Solutions, MDA, and SSL. Um, uh, it formed last year as a, as a result of a merger. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit, not only what Digital Globe does, but introduce you to Maxar um, and some of the sister companies we have, starting with SSL. Now, SSL, I don't know if anyone's heard of this. It stands for Space Systems Laurel. Uh, you may not have heard of it, but you're probably using technology uh, from SSL every single day. If you, if you got Wi-Fi on your plane, that probably came from a satellite that SSL built. They build, they are the industry's largest uh, manufacturers of satellites, telecommunications, broadband, Sirius XM, direct TV, satellite uh, Wi-Fi. Um, and they're building earth imaging satellites for Digital Globe and, and Planet Labs or, or Planet. So uh, you're touching a lot of their, their products without even knowing it. A cool throwback to Detroit, this was once owned by Ford for 34 years. So for 34 years, this was Ford Aerospace as they developed communications technologies. This was back in the 50s and the 60s. Um, that, was bought, that was bought by a company called Loral, which is now SSL. So um, Ford is in our genealogy, so to speak. Uh, one real cool mission they're doing is called Restore L with NASA. Uh, so the restore satellites on the left, that's Landsat 7 on the right. So we are building a satellite to go refuel Landsat 7 in orbit. Um, we, we as U.S. taxpayers, we pay about a billion dollars for the government to build these Landsat satellites. Landsat 7 and 8 are, are twins. Um, Landsat 7 is running out of fuel. So instead of letting it turn to space junk, why don't we go refuel it? And that's exactly what this mission is doing. Um, taking it even a step further, we're working with DARPA um, to go and fix satellites that have broken down. In fact, Landsat 7 has a scanline error correct, scanline corrector error. It's had it since like 2004, so it's kind of problematic. Well, we're building satellites to go fix other satellites up in space and service them on orbit. Um, Mind-blowing stuff, again. MDA, uh, so MDA is based in Canada, uh, Vancouver, Canada. Um, what you're looking at there is the Canada arm uh, that was originally, the first Canada arm was on the space shuttle, the second one, it's on the ISS. So that's it operational today. It, it helps m fix things and move things on the space station. Um, it's such an iconic, uh, uh, I iconic piece of technology. It's on the back of the Canadian $5 bill. Now that's obviously not a real, Canadian $5 bill, it's a specimen, so don't photocopy that or anything. But um, it's a huge achievement. Um, and, and MDA, uh, which is one of our sister companies, uh, is the manufacturer of that, that piece of technology. Uh, MDA is also operating a, a constellations of satellites called RadarSat. Um, it, so instead of using optical wavelengths and frequency to um, map the Earth, it uses a radar pulse and bounces a pulse off the Earth and back and measures change, measures distance. Um, and one real cool thing that they're doing, and, and um, some of our colleagues from MDA were in Boulder last year. They couldn't make it this year, but I'm hoping they'll make it next year. Uh, this might be a little hard to see, but I will post these slides. But all those little polygons on the map represent something that's changed in the San Francisco Bay Area. So they're able to go over San Francisco every couple of weeks and do a delta and figure out what's changed on, on I think I have an, actually, I, th I think I have an example here. So this is a neighborhood um, and uh, we've detected change and lo and behold, a bunch of homes and, and roads have been built. So 
every one of these little polygons in that previous slide represents change. And the point of that is, um, what if we, what if MDA, and I, um, I've talked to my colleagues up there uh, about this, what if we license this as open data? So much like the Microsoft building footprints, much like OSM, what if we publish some of this data and allow the user community to, to play around with it? Um, if that concept is interesting to you, uh, let me know. Okay, whoops. All right, so this is what Digital Globe does. That's uh, where we are. Um, we're in that big white building towards the bottom. I tried to enlarge the giant uh, world map that's uh, behind the Renaissance Center down at the bottom, which I thought was cool. And I thought we could see that from space, and it turns out we could see that from space. Um, this is what Digital Globe does. Um, and we do that with um, five satellites that are orbiting in a polar orbit. This is what it looks like. Um, it takes about 90 minutes to go around the Earth. And they're collecting all the time. So while we sleep, they're collecting. Uh, we have people that work on Thanksgiving and Christmas collecting data. It's a, it comes out to about 4 million square kilometers of high resolution imagery per day. Uh, the state of California is about half a million square kilometers. So think of eight Californias being collected every single day. It's a ton of data. And our traditional business, I stole this from like our 2013 website to make a point. Our traditional business are in these sectors, civil government, energy, um, defense and intelligence. We work with the uh, governments around the world to keep the world peaceful and safe. Um, since we're in Detroit, I want to acknowledge that we are extending that into a new industry, and perhaps you can guess what it is by this slide. Um, what we have found is, uh, here's an image from Mapillary, if you're, if you're in the room. Um, the paint markings you can see in, in a street level image, we can also see from space. Um, and we can enhance those and detect them, oops, and see uh, not only paint lines, but curbs, road furniture, um, crosswalks, lane markings from space. So if you think about the four million Californias we're collecting every day, what we realized is we're sitting on, on top of the largest road database in the world and paint line database in the world. And what we're doing right now is we're using machine learning and AI to go through that and extract all of that information and do it accurately. And what we found is working with uh, auto manufacturers and, and suppliers is that this is a fantastic data set to augment um, their mapping and ADAS and navigation data sets that they already have. Um, that is, to me, really cool and, um, and, uh, and really interesting technology as, as vehicles not only become automated, but even semi-automated in, in keeping, keeping vehicles safe and our roads safe. Uh, this is, if, if you've edited OpenStreetMap, and I won't ask you to raise your hand because I don't want to embarrass anyone like Todd who hasn't edited. I'm just kidding. Um, if you've edited OpenStreetMap, you'll notice as soon as you hit the edit button, imagery appears. And over on the right hand side, if you hit the B button, you get a bunch of options for imagery. That's probably how you know and have touched Digital Globe in the past. Um, so any, I consider any uh, con contributor to OpenStreetMap an end user of Digital Globe. And there's a few options in there, and we'll be hearing from Esri after this, uh, Mapbox, uh, Bing. Um, the funny thing is, is Digital Globe. Not only are we pushing imagery to OSM, we're also licensing imagery to those other companies. So sometimes what happens is you'll click the Esri button, and you'll get the same image from the Digital Globe. That's because um, we're licensing our data to them. Get a lot of questions about that, but more. Because we're collecting so much data, more than often what happens is you'll see a different vintage or a different, um, different image in each one of the layers, so you have options. And as a mapper, you want to have options. Um, I consider satellite imagery like a core utility for mapping. I cannot map without it. Um, this is my neighborhood, and I've been going around and mapping. Like OpenStreetMap, it's probably a bad name because it's way more than streets. It's not just streets. Um, and it's not really a map either, it's more of a database. And there are arguments earlier about whether it's truly open or not. So um, the name's cool though, so let's stick with it. Um, but clearly, this is my neighborhood. I'm mapping more than streets. 
um, I'm mapping fences and trees and shrubs and the, the park behind my house and stuff. And I do that all with imagery. I can't do that with a GPS trace. Um, I've tried to, it doesn't work. So again, um, fundamental for OSM. And a feature we launched last year, and I don't know if Brian Housel's in the, in the room, he was instrumental to help. Um, we have a metadata service because the most frequent question we get is, well, when was this image collected? Well, if you hit Command Shift B, and I don't know what it is on uh, uh, QGIS, um, but in IDE, if you, uh, there's a shortcut to bring up, um, and that little green uh, date is the date that image was collected. So you have access to uh, important metadata to know, oh, is this an image from this year, last year, five years ago? Now, one of our big initiatives is our open data program. Um, who, by the way, uh, who has heard of this or utilized uh, open data from Digital Globe? Miriam, I know. <laughs> I know the hot team and Miriam, so thank you. Um, I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of this. As a company, what we decided was for sudden onset disasters where people's lives were at stake, it would be silly for us to keep this imagery to ourselves. So we're making it massively open. We're publishing it. Everything's on AWS. Joe will probably talk about this later. We've, we've been busy. There's been, you'll see, you know, if you go to this page, you'll see hundreds of events that we've covered. In September alone, uh, the tsunami in Indonesia, uh, the Hurricane Florence in, in the US, super typhoon that hit the Philippines. So we're publishing tons of data with its metadata, with, a, with an open license, and it's all um, licensed for OpenStreetMap usage as well. So um, if, if you're interested in that sort of thing, please check it out. Here's, an, here's the most recent example. This is uh, Palu, Indonesia, um, and this was, you can see that bridge is completely toppled over and all the, road, all the buildings and roads are, are um, completely wiped out from the tsunami wave. That data is available online. Um, we've also launched this past year something called GBDX Notebooks. GBDX is our machine learning uh, analytics platform. And Notebooks, in my opinion, is one of the coolest products we put out there. It's built on the Jupyter Notebooks framework. So using Python, and we have a community tier that's free um, with access to the entire Iconos archive. Iconos is a, a legacy satellite of ours that was launched in 99, decommissioned a few years ago. But for free, any of you can check these notebooks out and using Python and a simple notebooks framework, you can start accessing our archive and running analytics and analysis on our imagery all within a notebook. So please check that out. Um, another initiative I want to talk about is SpaceNet. Um, now I'm going to give you the 60 second version. There's, uh, Joe's going to talk about it a little bit in his talk in 20 minutes or so. And then there's a, there's a talk tomorrow, Todd's uh, going to be presenting, um, and they're going to do a deep dive into SpaceNet, so I'm not going to pretend I know everything about SpaceNet. But what this challenge is, is we're, we put five cities out there that are listed at the bottom, a bunch of imagery, a bunch of labeled uh, buildings and roads, and they're on their fourth round of the challenge, and there's, uh, uh, Todd, there's cash, right? Ca prize? There's prizes. There's money to be won for whatever team completes the challenge the best. So very successful rounds one, two, and three, and they're starting around four in two weeks, a couple weeks, pretty soon. So check that out, check it. What? Oh yeah, so um, the, the challenge is um, creating building footprints with imagery that is very high off nadir, which means if it, this is a building and our satellite's taking a picture like this, it's gonna look, appear as if it's leaned over. So can you complete, you can see two sides very well, the other two sides are usually obstructed from that building, can you complete the, the entire building and do it accurately and do it at scale? That's the challenge. Um, lastly, uh, Digital Globe has really been a trailblazer in the remote sensing and earth observation industry. Um, we were the first to launch a submeter satellite, we were first to launch a 30 centimeter satellite the laws of the U United States had to change in order for us to distribute that imagery because pr previous to a few years ago, it was illegal for us to distribute that imagery. Uh, and we're going even further, and we have a program called Legion that's launching in the next few years, which is gonna put up um, a massive constellation of satellites, um, and it'll allow us to 
uh, collect imagery of, of cities multiple times a day. So from morning to evening, depending on latitude, it could be up to 20 or 30 times per day. Today, we're lucky to get a city once a day or once every few days. Um, and I, I just want to make you aware that, yeah, we built OpenStreetMap uh, on satellite imagery primarily. Um, and it's about to be put on steroids uh, in the future as not only Digital Globe but other, other Earth observation companies um, are putting up these massive constellations. So if you're in the mapping world or you like maps or you like space, it is a great time to be alive. Thank you. I'll take some questions or something. <clears throat> I think we have a few minutes. I tried to move fast to make up for lost time, but yes. Okay, uh, yes. Um, we, so the question is, are we collecting non-Earth things? Um, and, you know, if you're, if you're familiar with the Hubble telescope, um, actually the background image is from the Hubble telescope. Hubble telescope is basically a giant camera looking out into space. Ours are the same thing, but they're just looking at Earth. And we can move them around. So we have collected really cool shots of the moon. Um, theoretically, we can collect other objects as well, but Hubble does it way better. So it's kind of like, eh, let's just use Hubble data instead of our data, but, but yes. We do some pretty extreme things with our satellites. Um, one, one thing uh, I'll just mention is um, we, we typically are taking images directly above a city. And what we'll do sometimes, like if we're, um, we've done this, like if our satellites in the Atlantic, o over the Atlantic Ocean, we'll turn it back and look at New York City or Detroit or Florida or Miami and take these like super oblique perspective shots, which are really cool. Um, and we've posted a bunch of those in our blog. But yeah, we do, we do weird geeky things with satellites. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, <laughs> one more. <laughs> Yeah, a good question. So, um, really good question. What's our benefit? What is the benefit to Digital Globe by putting our data on OSM? Uh, we asked ourselves the same question a few years ago, and, and there's per varying perspectives that, oh my gosh, if we put our imagery out there for OSM users, then no one will ever need to buy a Digital Globe image again. Um, and that's not true. Um, what is true is it, the benefit is exposing um, openly our imagery to a massive crowd of very astute uh, mapping. Uh, they might be professionals or they might be amateurs. Um, and what that leads to is, is we, we're not putting our latest and greatest and best imagery out there. Also, we're only licensing this for OSM. So you, if you start up a business tomorrow, you can't just take that imagery and, and do whatever, it's license for specific use. More often than not, what we see is companies come to us and say, oh, we saw your imagery on OSM, we have this commercial application, can we get a commercial license for that? So it actually drives, um, it drives awareness, it actually drives business for Digital Globe. And Digital Globe, um, I've talked about this in previous, my previous talks, we're a publicly traded company, like the objective for our company is to make money. And guess what we spend our money on? So we spend our money on building more satellites so that mappers continually will have access to satellite imagery to build more maps. Um, so the point of our company is to actually generate a profit um, and that those profits get turned around into, into future constellations. So that's it's a good question. I, I actually did a whole talk on that because I would often get asked, well, what's your business model and how do you, you know, what's the point of Digital Globe? So I think it was, Three years ago, I did a whole presentation on, okay, let's talk about business. And then, yeah, it's on YouTube. All right, thank you.